Hey everyone, Oak Norton here with Scripture Notes, and I just wanted to share with you something that happened to me this past week as I was studying the Scriptures. It's an example of how to dig into the Scriptures more. I I don't even know how I first came across this verse in, in Ezekiel chapter 3, but the Lord is talking to Ezekiel and he says, I've made you a watchman to the house of Israel to give them warning from me. And so as I saw this and I started reading the verses after it, I realized there was uh, some logic here to what the Lord was trying to teach. And so I just want to show what this is and what it led to. And so the Lord said, when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. So situation one, the Lord tells you to warn the wicked. You fail to do so. He's going to die in his sin, but the Lord is going to require his blood at your hand. Situation two, if you warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked ways, he shall die in his iniquity but thou hast delivered thy soul. His blood is not on your hands because you have given him the warning. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, the Lord does this to, to try and get people to wake up and see like, hey, you know, you're going down the wrong path. Let me stumble you here so you go back onto the right path. He shall die because thou hast not given him a warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. So we got to be warning the righteous that turns from his righteousness and the wicked. And the Lord concludes this with, Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin because he repents, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. So, this is the simple logic of the Lord in warning people. And what happened was, as I was reading this, I thought, hmm, there's other scriptures that talk about warning. Like in the Doctrine and Covenants, there's a, a verse that talks about, uh, it becometh every man who hath been warned to warn his neighbor. And I started thinking, and I'm sure the Spirit just prompted me, like, well, where else are there warnings in scripture? So I opened up a search pane over here on the left side in scripture notes, and I did a search for the word warn with an asterisk after it. And the asterisk is just a wild card. So it picks up warn, warned, warning, warnings, any variation on the end. And with that, I found 54 verses. That's all there is in the scriptures, 54 verses on warnings. And so I started to go down through these and mark them as I decided to do so. And, you know, I saw the Ezekiel verses and I'm coming down here a little further, a little further. There's more here in Ezekiel. There's other verses, a lot of warnings in Ezekiel. And then I hit this verse in Matthew and being warned of God in a dream, talking about the wise men, that they should not return to Herod. They departed into their own country another way. And all of a sudden, I just realized, wait a minute. Does the Lord live by his own standards that he's given us? That there's a warning that must be given or else God ceases to be God kind of thing. Uh, what? Where has the Lord warned people and what's the standard here? I was trying to figure that out and it I never would have seen that insight if I hadn't actually done a search for the word to, to see like everything everywhere it was being used. And so that insight led me to create a collection note right here, create CN. A collection note is just that set of verses, but now with a master note that you can type in and at any time I can always open up and see my notes for those verses as well. and. So I started to, uh, you know, type this note and I started to go down through these verses. The Lord, just some examples, he warns the wise men not to return to Herod, Joseph and Mary to go to Nazareth instead of back to Jerusalem. Cornelius, a righteous Roman, was told to call on Peter to teach him. Nephi, 
uh, Lehi. They're warned to depart from Jerusalem, and Nephi and the believers have to leave the colony when they're in the New World. Mosiah is warned, Alma and his people are warned, and there's many more. I haven't even finished going down through this. But what's interesting to me is that it seems that the Lord has this standard of warning people just the same as what he tells us to do. So I don't know exactly how this works. Uh, does the Lord just warn the righteous? And if the righteous ignore it, then the blood's on their own heads, but they've been warned by the Spirit to, to take a certain action. Is it Does it come down to following the Spirit? But for those that can't hear the Spirit, does the Lord expect us to be watchmen to warn our neighbors? And it seems like, you know, there are scriptures that support that. And so I just, just like the Lord calls a prophet who warns the people, I think the Lord may live by this uh, same standard among the righteous. It doesn't have to be a prophet that he warns. I mean, right here, Cornelius, a righteous Roman, was repenting, calling on the name of God for direction. And the Lord gave him that insight to seek out Peter. And so, anyway, this is just an example. I'm not going to go deep into, you know, uh, what I'm trying to study here myself. But I just wanted to show that, you know, when you see something in the scriptures... It, it pays to ponder for a moment and do a search for that word or multiple words and see where else they're used in the scriptures. Because the Lord doesn't just put everything in one spot and he expects us to search the scriptures, not just study a verse and, you know, read it in context and, and do some simple things around that verse. There's, there are things that are only discernible when we search the scriptures and see where else something is being used. And this is just one insight that came to me this week. Thought I'd share that. And I hope that's helpful uh, in your own studies so that you sort of pay attention to things that are unique and do some searches and create some collection notes. Try to organize your thoughts around that topic. I know it's been a blessing in my life to get revelation that way and insights into the gospel. And um, I hope you can uh, also have those same experiences. See you next time.